Dwarf Lab released their Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope about a year ago, and to the company's credit, they worked very hard on continuously releasing updates to the app as well as the firmware of the telescope to add functionalities and create an even more user-friendly experience. So I thought it would be fun in this video to look at the astrophotography functionality updates of the Dwarf 3 in June 2025. And more particularly, I'm going to show you my latest attempt to capture a mosaic of the Veil Nebula complex using the Dwarf 3 in EQ mode and pushing the exposure time to the max. I'll also check out the new Stellar Studio, which is a new in-app feature for editing astro images with the Dwarf 3. I'm Wido Ullemans and you are watching Wido's Astro Forum. So I already covered the Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope extensively as one of the most affordable smart telescopes on the market today, together with ZWO's Seastar S30 and S50. You'll find links to my reviews and comparison videos in the description below. For those who are new to smart telescopes, these all-in-one telescopes come with a camera and a motorized mount to find and track celestial objects in the night sky. Just put the Dwarf 3 on a tripod, connect to the telescope over Wi-Fi using the Dwarf Lab app on your smartphone or tablet and select an object you want to see. Smart telescopes like the Dwarf 3 will then automatically slew to that object, find it and start taking and stacking photos of that object which will appear live on your smart device. With each new photo stacked onto the previous one, smart telescopes like the Dwarf 3 increase the so-called signal to noise ratio. Each new image increases the brightness of the object you're imaging while reducing the noise in the stacked photo. All of this functionality makes it very easy for complete beginners as well as experienced astronomers to find and gaze at objects in the night sky. The easiest way to use the Dwarf 3 is to put it on a level tripod. But if you switch into EQ mode, the telescope can follow the paths of objects in the sky like star clusters, galaxies or nebulas much more precisely. In EQ mode, you line up the Dwarf 3 with Earth's celestial pole, so you can take longer exposures and capture brighter images of your objects. EQ mode also stops something called field rotation, which in LS mode causes parts of your image to slowly drift out of view as the sky moves. In my recollection, Dwarf Lab was among the first companies to include EQ mode as a feature in its smart telescope. As putting the telescope into EQ mode takes a bit of effort, let me first show you how to do that. For those who already know this, feel free to skip ahead. To use EQ mode on the Dwarf 3, you need a tripod head that can rotate the telescope towards the north or south celestial pole. You can also use a wedge on the telescope tripod, which is usually a little bit more stable. Here's my process for aligning the Dwarf 3. First, Level your tripod and make sure one leg is pointed toward true north. Second, turn the wedge or tripod head so it faces south. Third, mount the Dwarf 3 onto the tripod head or wedge. The Dwarf 3 has a standard 1420 threaded hole, which is a typical photo camera connection, but my Skywatcher wedge uses a 3816 thread, so I use a 1420 to 3816 adapter to secure the Dwarf 3 on the wedge. With the Dwarf 3 mounted, wait for nightfall, power it on and connect the telescope to the Dwarf Lab app over Wi-Fi. In the app, go to Astro Mode and select the EQ Mode alignment procedure. First, make sure the Dwarf 3 is in a 45 degree angle for the camera and point it towards the stars. I usually switch to 1 second exposures and use autofocus on a bright star. Once the Dwarf 3 is focused, start the EQ mode routine. The Dwarf 3 will calibrate itself and tell you how far off it is from the celestial pole. Next, use the altitude and azimuth adjustment bolts on your wedge or very gently pivot your tripod to nudge the telescope left or right and up or down following the app's advice. After each adjustment, return the Dwarf 3 to its starting position and let the app check your alignment again. 
keep adjusting until the app confirms that your telescope is accurately lined up with Earth's celestial pole. So, on this particular night, I wanted to test some of the Dwarf 3's newest features by capturing the Veil Nebula. Since it's June here in the Netherlands, nights are very short and the sun barely dips below the horizon. That left me with only about 3 hours of true darkness between twilight and dawn for this test. By around midnight, I had finished EQ alignment. Then I targeted the Veil Nebula, which is an impressive supernova remnant that's roughly 10,000 years old. The entire veil complex spans about 5 degrees of sky, so most astrophotographers concentrate on either the eastern or western portion separately. So one of the Dwarf 3's biggest advantages over other smart telescopes is its wide native field of view. So instead of focusing on just half the nebula complex, I opened the app's Sky Atlas, found the veil nebula complex and switched to framing or mosaic mode. This mode lets the Dwarf 3 capture neighboring regions outside its original sensor size and then automatically combines them into one large seamless image. Of course, each mosaic segment receives less total exposure time than if I had just shot at the native field of view. Nevertheless, I was curious to see how the mosaic mode would perform, so that's what I ran with. After selecting the mosaic, the Dwarf 3 slewed to the object. I noticed that Dwarf Lab had extended the maximum exposure time to about 120 seconds, so I decided to give that a try. However, after a few minutes I saw that many frames were being dropped, so I reverted to 60 second exposures. That worked great! Over 90% of the images I took that night were successfully stacked into the final mosaic image. Because I had limited time, I pushed the gain level up to 120. I also used the duo filter to increase contrast on the hydrogen and oxygen rich regions of the Veil Nebula while blocking out light pollution under my Bortel 7 skies. Since it was already past midnight, I checked whether I could use the app's planning mode to let the Dwarf 3 run from about 1am to 3.30am. I was actually able to schedule a session, but not with that specific mosaic I had selected in the atlas. I could choose a single object by name, but I couldn't reselect that exact mosaic rectangle I had in mind. So I decided to run the Dwarf 3 at 60 second intervals and stay awake for this session. I settled onto the couch and I kept an eye out on the progress and filmed the time lapse of the night sky. You can clearly see that conditions were far from ideal, with hazy clouds drifting through the field of view. At 3.30 am I stopped the imaging session and ended up with about 160 second exposure stacked, so that's roughly 2 hours of total integration time. The next morning I downloaded the individual FITS files and stacked images onto my PC to edit them further. Upon downloading the images, I noticed that the Dwarf Lab added a new Stellar Studio feature, which allows in-app editing without the need for external software. I actually think this is great, especially for beginners who don't yet have access to Photoshop or FixInsight, which can be quite expensive. I gave Stellar Studio a try and I was pleasantly surprised by its capabilities. Stellar Studio offers three main tools, star sharpening, denoising and removing stars. Each tool creates a new version of the image alongside the original one, so you can compare before and after results. There's also an auto button for those who just want an enhanced image without getting into further editing. So I went back and forth using these tools and I found that they mimic some of the steps we also use in advanced astrophotography workflows. Stellar Studio is perfect for anyone who wants a polished photo without investing money in high-end editing software or investing lots of time in learning the ropes of post-processing in astrophotography, which can be quite difficult. Let me also show you the image I created using PixInsight and Photoshop. 
Now, keep in mind that two hours is far too short to produce a high-resolution mosaic of the Veil Nebula complex. I really think I would need at least 10 hours of total integration time. That being said, this two-hour Veil mosaic does show that the Dwarf 3 is able to capture a high-quality, or at least a good-quality, wide-field mosaic. I may revisit the Veil Nebula again in August, when nights are a bit longer, which allows me to get more integration time on these objects with the Dwarf 3. So let me recap my thoughts on the Dwarf 3 in 2025. What's great is that Dwarf Lab is continuously upgrading its firmware and the app, which really benefits many Dwarf 3 users. The addition of mosaics is fantastic and exposures up to 2 minutes in EQ mode help to create beautiful images of the night sky at a reasonable price. Setting up EQ mode can be trickier for beginners than using LDS mode, but it's worth it if you want to move beyond casual stargazing and capture higher quality images. I could easily push the Dwarf 3 to 60 seconds without issue. Also, the Stellar Studio features that automatically enhance your pictures without requiring you to dive into the complexities of astrophotography post-processing are great for those who aren't willing to spend a lot of time and effort increasing their astro-imaging skills. So, all in all, I really admire that companies like Dwarf Lab continue to push the limits of budget-friendly astronomy and astrophotography. Well, that's my take. I appreciate your input, so you're welcome to leave a comment. Subscribing to my channel also really helps me to keep making videos about astrophotography and astronomy. Thanks a lot. I'm Mido Oelemans. Clear skies.